Hello and welcome to Mule HQ. As many of you know from watching my recent videos, the fishing has been booty lately. So here's the dealio. I wanted to film a video talking about a subject which I felt was important, especially for light line guys like you and me. Yes, I'm drinking wine. I'm a little bit fancy tonight. So what? Mmm. Mm-hmm. A nice dry red. But I'm not talking about wine today. What I actually wanted to talk about is the length of your ultralight fishing rod. So here next to me, I have three ultralights. Well, one's actually a light action, but same thing. And as many of you know, I obviously love ultralight fishing, and I've been doing it for the last couple of years, and really, really getting into it lately. So I felt like this was a good topic, because I've got a seven-foot ultralight. I just picked up this five-foot six light action rod, very similar to an ultralight, and then I've got a five-foot ultralight. And there's such a big difference between all three of these. Wait, one second, I just thought of something. Does this episode kind of remind you of something? Maybe an old series? I don't know, I can't put my... Five minute fish talk, that's right. Yeah, I'm basically doing a five minute fish talk, but it's not a real five minute fish talk. I still have this uh, poster though. I don't know what to do with this thing. Anyways, um, yes, back to the size of your ultralight fishing rod. For me, there's such a big difference between these rods. You know, I've mostly been using the seven foot and the five foot, and I'm gonna be honest with you, they feel extremely different on the water. Yes, they are the same power, but no, they are not the same length and they do not perform the same on the water. So I wanted to talk about each size and kind of what the benefits are of going longer versus shorter, so on and so forth. So let's start out with the old five foot ultralight. I'm gonna be honest with you, this is actually my favorite one. Um, I always thought that the seven foot was gonna be more my style because in bass fishing world, I really, really like seven foot rods. They work really well for me. But what I've realized is when you're dealing with these ultralight powers, a short rod is really, really great. I don't know what it is. It just feels so much more balanced and it feels right. The other thing that I really like about this five foot rod is that when I'm fishing with it, a lot of times I'm around a lot of trees and brush and whatnot. And so the problem with a long rod is when you start to cast, you go back, your line, your rod tip is getting wrapped up in a bunch of stuff. Whereas this five foot is super portable. And when I'm wading a creek or walking around on the bank, I don't have to deal with those issues. In the kayak, I would say there's not as much of an advantage um, as far as the length goes. But overall, yeah, this really is my favorite one. Now, let's just talk about the main differences between a five foot and a seven foot. You know, when you add two extra feet, what is that gonna give you? That is gonna give you better casting distance. Now, the five foot on the other hand is probably gonna be more accurate and then more portable. I've realized that for an ultralight, with the way, with how flimsy it is, I can still wing baits out pretty far with this, and 99% of the time, I don't need to cast super far anyways, so what I've realized is that a short rod for ultralights is really more my style. Obviously, I'm kind of rambling here, and I don't have a lot of structure to this video, but I did just want to talk about the subject, because I thought you guys could get some value out of it, and I thought maybe you could actually add value by commenting below what your preferences are, because one thing that I do know is that everybody's got their own preferences, and there's no right or wrong answer here. So getting into the seven foot rod, the reason that I don't like this one quite as much as the five foot is because it's so flimsy and it's so long, it just feels wonky. I don't even know how to describe it. When I'm casting small baits, it just feels kind of tip heavy, um, and that is actually why I changed the reel out from this new rod I got, and I put a bigger reel on this one. I think it's gonna, help the performance of this seven foot rod immensely because it's gonna help the balance of it. So I'm using a larger reel. I still only have four pound test on it, um, but it's a larger reel to where I'm gonna have better balance. I'm gonna keep that rod tip high and I have a feeling the castability is gonna be more comfortable. So, you know, after the next several episodes of actually fishing with this thing, obviously my, my, um, my thoughts are subject to change. Now, just for fun, let's just talk about this new rod I got. I actually got this thing super cheap. I wasn't planning on buying a rod and reel, but there was a five foot six Fluger President combo. I switched out this little small reel for the other reel, but the point is, I got this thing for $20. It's normally a $90 combo, so I could not resist. This thing's gonna be dynamite for the old trout fishing, my friends. Yeah. We interrupt this rambling for a quick little swig of wine. Mm. I feel so sophisticated. So really I got the main point across. With bass fishing gear, I feel like, you know, using a seven foot rod or using a six six, you don't notice a huge difference in the performance. But one thing that I have realized is that ultralights really, the length of the rod really changes the way it feels in your hands. And it's not to say that one's better than the other, but it really, really is different. So what I would suggest is that everybody picks one up in person and feels what feels comfortable in their hands. 
This five foot ultralight is killer. I actually just set it up with two pound mono, so I switched down from four to two. This thing is going to be my new, like I'm probably gonna carry this like every time I go fishing because I absolutely love this. I really, really like the idea of catching um, a bunch of panfish on this, but even just getting into some bass and trout with two pound test is gonna be incredible, folks. So really, I'll probably use a lot of jigs on this. I'll probably stay away from some of the bigger rigs and some of the bigger baits. Uh, mostly jigs is probably what I will use here. Maybe some just bobbers and hooks too. I hear a dog. Karma! Oh, here we got a karma. Well, my dog was walking up the stairs, so I just had to get her. Um, I'm sure she really appreciates being on YouTube. Put me down, nerd! What, what? What'd you just say to me? What did you say to me? I said put me down, nerd! Alright, fair. That's fair. That's fair. You are such a good dog. You are... <laughs> <laughs> so what are my plans with this five foot six? To be quite honest with you, I really wish it would have been six foot because I think halfway in between would be an excellent combo. Five, six is great too. Obviously it's not that different. Having that light action is gonna give me just a little bit more backbone, a little bit more beef to, to throw bigger baits like this out there. So I'm really gonna use this with spinners and jerk baits and this is going to be an absolute mad, wicked, trout combo. I'm telling you, it's gonna be juicy. I went ahead and put the Fluger President XT on here. It's a much smaller reel. What I've realized is that smaller ultralights are okay, but I don't necessarily like this size reel. I think the Shimano 1000 size is kind of the optimal. It's like perfect, but this Fluger, what is this? What size? This size 20, too small. I'm telling you, it would be good for like ice fishing, um, but casting, it's kind of a pain in the butt. It does not pick up very much line with each turn of the handle, obviously. So, I don't know, it'll be fine on this rod, so I'm not super mad about it. I still love the reel. Um, I just realized that the thousand size Shimano is really my go-to. So I spooled this one up with four pound high-vis monofilament. And the reason is I'm really mostly gonna use moving baits with this rod and reel, so I don't really care that it's high-vis. I don't think the trout will notice too much because I'll be working jerk baits fast and I'll be working spinners pretty fast as well. So that's really the goal with this one. And then lastly, as far as what I'm gonna do with this seven footer, because I have this bigger reel in it now, I'm really gonna focus on bigger rigs that I need to cast a little further. The 130 second ounce mule jigs will obviously be used on this a lot. Stuff like Ned rigs, smaller Ned rigs are gonna work really well on this. Um, and then stuff like this, just like float and flies, anything with a um, some kind of rig, anything that's gonna have a lot of line out there, that's probably gonna be the go-to here. I'll probably try a lot of float fishing, really ultralight float fishing with this one, as you've seen me do in the past, but I think switching up to this size 30 Fluger is gonna be an absolute huge upgrade, folks. So, I'm pretty happy about it. I don't know, I just honestly rambled at you for like, you know, 10 minutes. I don't know whether this video is gonna turn out good or not, but one thing I do know is it's snowing outside and that's been kind of brutal. So, I wanted to talk about this subject because I enjoy talking to a camera about fishing stuff. You know what, Mule HQ's coming along. I've got a lot of stuff yet to do. I've got all my inventory of Mule stuff over here. Um, make an order, I'll shove them out. This is the station, folks. Regardless, thank you so very much for watching this random episode. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, all you gotta do is comment below and let me know. Otherwise, hope you have a great day and uh, we'll catch you next time.